Well, let's just bow our heads in prayer before we start. Father, we thank you for this day. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, we welcome you today. We just pray today, Lord, that a spirit of excellence will fall upon us. In our lives, Lord, I pray through this message that you'll uh, cause us to go deeper in you and, and that your spirit will uh, keep us in check at all times in our life in excellence. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning. Morning. Good morning. Everybody looks excellent this morning. <laughs> How many people this week used excellence? Did we apply that in our life? I know we, I tried to apply it in my life. You know, sometimes I think I do things excellent, but there's times that my wife uh, tells me I don't. <laughs> I thought about playing a clip this morning, and I didn't, but uh, there used to be a wrestler in the WWF that was called Mr. Perfect. If, you, if any of you ever watch wrestling, I know that's probably a bad thing to watch, but Mr. Perfect was perfect at everything. The perfect moves, he played every sport. Well, we're not going to talk about being perfect, but we want to talk about excellence. We want to talk about uh, going deeper in excellence. That's our theme this year is going deeper. So last week we talked about excellence. This week we're going to go deeper with excellence. And, uh, you know, thinking about excellence, you know, I thought about my upbringing and uh, my father, my grandfather, and how you're raised. And, and that, that a lot of times shines a light on sometimes how you become as a per person. And my dad used to always have the slogan when we do things, he'd say, you know, if we're not going to do them right, if we're not going to do it right, we're not going to do it at all. And look, I, I still to this day have that ringing in my mind all the time. Everything we did, you know, he had this idea in his mind. He wanted to do things right. He was a bit of a perfectionist, okay? So that pushed him in those areas. My grandfather, now, he wasn't per se a perfectionist, but he liked excellence. And he was a, he was a unique guy. You know, he was a quiet guy, but, you know, like, he was pretty particular about things. But he wasn't a per perfectionist. I know that about him because I spent a lot of time with him. But, you know, like, he, he would, uh, he liked his car spotless. He'd spend the hours, <laughs> Probably know. He wouldn't even go to town, he called it going to town, if there was dew on the ground, because he didn't want to get that on his car. <laughs> and, uh, and if he took his car to, to the town, the little town, to get some groceries and it snowed or rained, it, it might be 20 below zero, and he'd wash that in the yard, out there in the cold, maybe at 80 years old, and then put it into his garage with the floor painted and the curtains up in his garage. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm not to that stage. <laughs> but he did, he did do things. I think my grandfather was pretty excellent in a lot of different ways. The way I was raised. But we want to go forward in excellence. And so I want to read a, a portion of scripture. And... Uh, I'll probably paraphrase some of it because there's a lot of verses. But I want to I talk for a few minutes about um, the parable of the bags of gold. So I'm going to just read the first part and I'm going to stop. Then we're going to talk about some, some ways that we can apply excellence in our life. And in Matthew it says... Um, again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servant and entrusted his wealth with them. To one he gave five bags of gold and to another two bags of, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Just remember that word, ability. 
And then he went on his journey. The man who received five bags of gold went at once, and think about this, at once, little key words here that stuck out to me, at once and put his money to work and gained five more bags. Also the one with two bags of gold, the same thing. But the man who had received one bag went, dug a hole in the ground, and hid it. The master's money. Now I'm going to finish off this whole story, but I want to, I want to just key on a couple things in the beginning. You see, God gives us all ability. He gives us all talents. And uh, it's how we use those talents. You know, every individual here, if you take a second and you examine yourself, you can begin to see some abilities you have in your life. If you just stop and think about it. What abilities has God given you? What talents has God given you? And do you do it with excellence, what he gives you? Maybe you're a janitor. Maybe you're a school teacher. Maybe you're a real estate salesman. Maybe you're a mother. Maybe you're a father. Maybe you're a cab driver. But are, do you do it with excellence? See, everybody's given something. But what do we do with it? We're all given something. Do we do it to the best of our abilities? Do we do it unto the Lord? Here we see that one gentleman was given five bags and one was given two and one was given one. And the first two guys, they went out immediately. They used what was given to them, what the master gave them. And they went... What's it say? Almost immediately and went to work at it. Where the other one, he just went and dug a hole. My, my first point would be, are we doing excellence in our work? Excellence in our work. The Bible says in, in uh, Proverbs uh, 10, 4, it says, A slack hand causes poverty, but a hand of diligence makes rich. How are we with what God gives us in our work? Now, we'll talk for a minute about our natural workplace, and then we're going to talk about our spiritual. But how do we work? How are we? Are we lazy? Or are we ambitious? Now, let me just back up for a second here and tell you that when the master come back, he was happy with the first two. And he said, you did a great job. But the last gentleman that dug a hole, he said, this, I quote this. <laughs> this is a quote. <laughs> so you don't think I'm making it up. The master replied, you wicked and lazy servant. Okay, we're going to examine ourselves. So in our work, are we ambitious or are we lazy? Laziness is a quality of being unwilling to work or use energy, idleness. Ambition is a strong desire to achieve something. Uh, typically requires determination and hard work. So we're going to just talk about that for a minute. How do we work? Well, I was raised to work hard. That was something that was instilled into me, that I work hard. And, uh, you know, uh, growing up on the farm, you know, you have to work hard. Every day there's cows that need to be fed, you know, uh, in the summertime, you don't get to lay out in the sun. Well, you do. You're working out in the sun. You're, la you're loading hay on the trailer. You're working. It's, it just, it's a constant thing. When you're on a farm, it's a huge commitment. 
It's work, work, work. You know, and then we've seen people that have, you know, that lazy type of attitude that don't push forward or don't, you know, uh, try to work. I mean, we see it in our society. There's lots of people that don't work. And they can. They're healthy, they're strong, but they don't. You know, I, when my kids were young, I made them work. And I instilled some stuff into them. You know, I'd, I'd, when they were just little guys, I'd uh, take them out. They'd be piling wood or uh, working in the woods on the farm. And I'd make them work. And my sister-in-law used to always give me a hard time. She'd come down and she goes, like, that's slave labor. You shouldn't be doing that to these kids. <laughs> They're too young. And I used to keep a, <laughs> a little stick, a, a, a twig. Or, uh, i got to say this right so you guys don't... <laughs> We used to call it a switch. It was just a little branch. It was just my little incentive to keep them working. <laughs> when they were small, they'd start slacking. Joel was the slacker. <laughs> Matthew will tell you that. Joel was the workhorse. And Matthew, or Matthew was the workhorse. Joel was that lean, um, thoroughbred that eventually would run out of steam. <laughs> and uh, he'd take off, and he would be small. And he'd be like, they're too big. He'd say, oh, those... Those chunks of wood are too big, and there'd be small ones like this. I said, well, pick up all the small ones then. Put them in the pile. And then I sat them down, and I'd give them a lecture. I said, I'm going to tell you something, boys. If there's one thing that I'm going to teach you in life, this is the work. And nobody's going to say that my kids are lazy. That's one thing I'm going to do as a father. I'm going to teach you to work. You see, work ethic boils off in every parts of our life. Right? When you grow up, it, 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 it determines sometimes whether you're successful in areas because how much work you put into it. How much work, you know, work you've, you've all worked with people and you'll see people that uh, put a lot into it and don't. And we see that in our church life. We see that in our spiritual life, that there can become a laziness that takes place and not an ambitious spirit. Now, I want to tell you, we're not saved by works, we're saved by grace only. But you know, it takes effort. It takes ambition. It takes strong work to be a Christian, to run that race and finish it. It takes the determination not to give up. You see, Jesus doesn't like it when we're lazy. He doesn't like it when we're slackers. And, you know, I could have read a list of scriptures about being a sluggard and a slackard. And if you don't work, you don't eat. This is, this is an important principle yeah. in excellence. That we need to be ambitious. If you're, ambitious in your, if you're not ambitious in your spiritual life, think of where you're at. You know, we can live defeated lives because we're not ambitious, because we're lazy. When we become ambitious in our spirit, that's when we can begin to drive back the forces of evil, the attacks of the enemy, things in our life. We can use that ambition to our advantage. I think God wants us to know these things, that we need to be ambitious. When the enemy comes in against us, you know, there's times we just need to stand and be strong and ambitious and determined and not be willing to allow the enemy to overrun us. But if we're lazy in our spirit, what do we do? We just wilt. You think about it, though. We wilt when we're lazy. Oh, we don't have that determination. We don't have that effort. For excellence. For excellence. Are we working in the kingdom? Are we working to advance the kingdom of the Lord? Or are we just holding up air in places? Are we taking our talents and abilities that God has given us to go out of the four walls and reach the lost? Are we doing that? 
excellence would cause us to do that. We want to do all we can do for God, the best we can. Sing the best. Share. Help. Spend time with God. Excellence. Work. Ambition. Let's not be sluggards in our life. Let's rise early in the morning and spend with the Lord instead of laying in bed till noon on a Saturday. Get up in the morning and pray. Spend time with God, the ultimate Savior of our life. But we tend to lay in. We tend to put it off. We tend to say, oh, I'm too busy today. My job's, I got too many things scheduled in. I got too many things on my to-do list than to spend time with the Lord today. Excellence. Excellence in our work. Excellence in our work. You know, it's, it's easy to see people that put, you know, I'm not judging anybody. But you can tell, when you see somebody that does excellence, they stand out. They pop out. And you say, oh, wow, that is great. I'd like to do that. I'd like to be like that. You see, excellence in our work will make us stand out. People notice there's a difference between us and somebody else because of the excellence in our work. This goes along with it. Excellence in taking pride in your work and not yourself. You have to be careful that um, you don't get prideful and you don't err on perfection, right? But there has to be a little bit of pride to be able to do a good job. Now, I'm not saying that we should be prideful at all. But when we do stuff, we should take pride in our work. Not be haphazard. Is that a word? Sure it is. Here's the definition of haphazardness. It was a trick question. (laughs) Characterized by the lack of order or planning or irregularity, random, uh, aimlessness, uh, dependence on chance, Haphazardness. Haphazardness. Do we do our jobs? Do we live our life with God just by chance? Do we live our life with a lack of organizing or planning? You can plan every day to get up and spend time with God. You can set that time aside every day. You know, what if we didn't plan on our jobs in our natural? You know, if we didn't plan, if we didn't uh, put our stuff together, our bosses wouldn't like it. We would probably, the boss probably take us in his office and talk to us and say, hey, do you, you got anything, do you, you got a plan? you have no direction where you're going, anything? You know? We need to take pride in what we do. Pride. That means we plan. That means we try to do things with excellence. That means when we're doing things this week, we, Ron and I, we, we practiced excellence. We are working on that stage and the cuts, we are trying to get the cuts just excellent. We weren't saying perfect, you know, but we were. And then we wondered whether we should put the trim piece at the bottom like we did at the top. And then after, we decided, yes, we're going to do that. And then we stood back on it, and it looked excellent. Yeah. Then, then if we wouldn't have done that. And it, would, and it took us more time. Yeah. The thing is, it took us probably three more hours to do the bottom that certain way than if we wouldn't have. But we wanted to do excellence. Take pride in your work. Where you're working, whether it be in a bank or in teaching, you know, uh, if you're a salesman, uh, if you're a nurse, you take pride in how you do things. 
You know, you can tell people that take pride in, in life too. You ever notice people will walk by, there'll be a coffee cup on the floor out in the ground. There'll be like six people walk by and then there'll be that one person that stops, picks it up and puts it in the garbage. There's, there's some excellence there in that person. In our jobs, we need to be excellent. This, is, this has been a tremendous uh, uh, thought process for me uh, through Pastor Ken's book. But excellence. Let me read you a scripture. It says, what, uh, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as work for the Lord and not for a human master. That's the key. Ephesians says, serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not people. We need to be like that. We need to do these things as if our boss is Jesus. Wouldn't that change things? If we all worked for Jesus, we do work for Jesus, but say our natural boss was Jesus too. <laughs> right? We walked in there. Would we be organized? I think we would be a little bit <laughs> more excellent than what we are now. But when we do our work, things do it as we're doing it unto the Lord. Then it doesn't become a chore. You do it out of a different mindset. You do it to become excellence. Excellence with focus. In focus. I think excellence, some of these terms too, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you, you know, I think of my business background too. You know, we're, we're, we're focused when we do things. You know, we work hard when we do things. We take pride in our work, you know. But our focus, the center of interest or activity, the state or quality of having or producing a clear visual def uh, definition. We need to determine what we're doing. We need to be focused. We need not to be indecisiveness. It can be our, our worst thing, is when we second guess ourselves. Well, did, did I make the right decision? Should I have bought the red car and not the blue car? <laughs> That's a simple one. You know, we're indecisive. But when we're focused, it helps us in being excellence. If we know what our target is, if we know what our goal is, yeah. right? Let's, and that works in our, in our corporate sense, in our business sense, to be a, a people that are focused. Focused people are usually try to do things with excellence because they're focused, they're determined, they're going to get this done, bang, bang, bang. But we need to focus in our Christian life, in our spiritual life. You see, these things all flip-flop back and forth from a natural perspective to a spiritual perspective. Yeah. How are we focused in our Christian life with God? Is our eyes centered on Him? Is everything we do centered toward Him? Yeah. See, we have the Holy Spirit that's our guide, and He helps us keep us on focus. That's what our, our Holy Spirit does. He keeps us on focus. If you need more focus in your life, get more of the Holy Spirit. Spend more time with the Holy Spirit, and he'll help you focus more. And that'll push out the indecisiveness. You'll know you did the right decision. Because the Holy Spirit will tell you. You know, you know that knowing inside. You know, that's a practical thing you can do every day, is, is cultivate that... Uh, spirit side of your, your being. You know, uh, is this a good decision? Uh, should I make this move? You involve the Holy Spirit in those things. He keeps us focused in where we're at. James says that a double-minded man is unstable in his all of his ways. It's really important to be focused. Proverbs says that uh, do not turn to the left or the right. Keep your foot from evil. K 
keep ourselves focused. It also says to keep our hand to the plow and don't look back. Let's be people that are focused on godly things. On godly ambitions. Not fleshly ambitions. Let's keep ourselves focused on godly things. Excellence in doing. Well, procrastination versus getting it done. <laughs> you got to love me <laughs> this morning. <laughs> I think I've been fairly scriptural. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we tend to want to procrastinate. It's kind of like generated right in us to put things off. But that's contrary to the things of God. You know, how many times do we shelf things or we put it off, we put it off, we put it off, I'll do that another day, I'll do that another day. You know, a lot of times in our, in our work, it's the thing we don't want to do yeah. is the thing that we put off and becomes the lowest on our to-do list. So I learned in business, the thing that I hated the worst, I did first. Okay? And if you folks can, can see that in your natural life, in your work jobs, in your home life, and in your spiritual thing, it's really good. It, it, it helped me a lot in, in my spiritual life, but in my, my natural life, the peace of mind that would come, that job, that, that task-oriented one I'd want to put off, I did it first. Well, then it was like, wow, I got an easy day. I got the worst one out of the way. These other three things, they're just nothing. I'm going to play the rest of the day. You know, it, 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 it changes your whole mindset. Whereas if you leave it to the end, you're working through your tasks, and you're thinking, oh, I still got that monkey hanging at the end. And then that jumps over to the next day. And then you do the other ones, and then that jumps, and a week later, two weeks later, you still have mowed the lawn. Right? <laughs> but if we procrastinate in the spirit, it's harmful for us. Yeah. In the things of God, if we put off these areas in our life that we need to clean up, right? If we keep shoving them one day down the road, we're still living with that stuff. You know, if we live with unforgiveness, we just keep procrastinating and procrastinating. You know, you'll see people that, that are living a life, you, two years they still can't forgive, you know, their husband from kicking the dog. You know, June 3rd, 1969. You know, they just hold that unforgiveness forever. The procrastination. Don't allow that to take place. <laughs> forgive them right away. The dog might have tried to bite him. <laughs> Procrastination can be a real downfall to us if we, if we don't deal with those issues in our life. We, we never grow. We, we actually step backwards. You know, so if you want to grow in excellence, you got to grow forward. You got to get rid of that procrastination. And you got to be a doer. A doer. The, isn't there something in the Bible about that? In James? But to be doers of the word? Isn't that what the scripture says? That we should be doers of the word and not hearers of the word? And a lot of times we hear the word. The pastor preach. Our friend tell us we need to forgive somebody. But we don't become doers. We don't actually forgive them. We don't actually allow that to take root in our life because we're too busy procrastinating and not being a doer. Yeah. Well, God wants us to all be doers. Yeah. Excellence in doing. You can't be excellence if you don't do anything. <laughs> right? Well, maybe you could be excellent in not doing anything. <laughs> But the idea is to move forward in life. 
is to press farther and to be doers of the word. Last and but not least, excellence in our time. I put down an old word, tardiness, versus punctuality. Anybody know what tardiness is? I guess probably if you're 50 and older, you'll know. (laughs) If you're younger. But tardiness is, is basically a quality of being late. Being late. And punctuality is being on time. You know, like in our jobs, my father always told me, you know, if, if you go to work at 8 o'clock, be there at quarter to 8. Drilled that in my head. To this day, I always go to work early. You know, punctuality. I know they say uh, it's uh, fashionable to be late. But I think that's only for the person that is late. Because <laughs> everybody else is sitting down at the restaurant table waiting to order their ribs or their steak or whatever. And, and they're starting to talk about them and say, where is that you know, person that's late? Punctuality. You know, we need to be punctual in our jobs. I was taught, you know, like I worked for a corporation for a while and... Uh, you know, if we were late, you weren't late. I just, that's all I can say. You were never late for these meetings. Because when you went to the big boardroom, and there was the finance department, the, gen- the owner, the general manager, production, engineering, drafting, uh, marketing, sales, you didn't show up late. First of all, if you did, it would be really embarrassing. And second of all, the boss would talk to you, and probably the next time, you wouldn't be working for that company. They were a stickler in that corporate world on being on time. Well, why do we think in our Christian life that that doesn't apply? We come into church late. Oh, it's okay. They'll get the first two songs. I'll catch the last two songs. I- I'm sorry. But punctuality is important. We need to come to church on time. If you tell somebody you're going to be there at a certain time, you should be there. That's excellence. Not being late. Be on time. You see, (laughs) there's a scripture in the Bible that says, (laughs) no man knows the day nor hour. I think right there is a whole message in itself. I think I'd be on time. I think I'd be ready with my life. If you're here and you're not, and you haven't made Jesus your Lord and Savior, you need to. Because there's something about being ready and to be punctual and to be on time and to have your oil for your lamps and to have extra oil for your lamps. We need to be punctual. We need to be punctual with God. Set a time and pray. If you're not punctual with God, you think, you know, he should be punctual with you? We kind of do because of our grace message. But, you know, like nobody likes waiting. You know, I mean, we've all waited sometimes an hour before somebody showed up. Sometimes they've never showed up. But we're serving a God that we need to be punctual with. If we want to be excellence, we want to spend time with him. We want to be on time with him. We need to get our lives in order. We need to be ready for him. That if we walked out the door today, we're ready. We're on time. We're punctual. You know, if I go to sleep tonight, I don't have to wonder where I'm going. I know where I'm going. I'm getting a promotion in life. I'm stepping forward into the kingdom because I'm punctual. I'm ready in my spirit with God. That's where we need to be at all points in our life. Be ready in season and out of season. When we do our backyard bash,
We need to be out there. 